it to you. I want to start off before we talk about how people are making millions on Solana. Update me. What's the news right now in crypto? What's the news in meme coins? What's happening right now? What's happening this week? Yeah, for sure. So let's start with base. Um, there's been a lot of coins that have come out on base beginning uh, during our call actually last week. So literally during our spaces last week, there was a coin that came out called MFR, which was from the guys who made the NFT collection there. And it, I think it went up to 300 million on base. And you could have got in relatively early. A lot of people made a lot of money on it. And it wasn't like exceptionally difficult to find, really. You just had to see the contract, see like the volume, see it moving, and then check on Twitter and try and find out that it was like literally from the team. And once you know it's from the team, it goes wild. That said, I mean, that was like well beyond what my expectations of value are for that coin and that project. Um, but that was like a big one that happened actually during the spaces. And another big one on base uh, was Dino. So you guys all know about the pre-sale meta that's been going on, where you have projects like Roost that raise $12 million and then pocket a ton of it, right? And they don't add a ton to liquidity. So Dino was a project that someone made that basically contractually made it. So if you send a million dollars to the contract, it took all of it and put it into liquidity and then gave out the tokens to people uh, pro rat on the amount they put in. So what it did is it really made like a trustless way to run a pre-sale, which has existed before, by the way, but they reinvented it, so to speak, on base, uh, kind of in line with, like, the pre-sale meta. So those were two, like, bangers that were on base. So, let, let me ask you this. So, MF, sure. I saw this, and obviously, you know, you're, you're more of an expert than I am, but I saw there were some people that put in, like, very low amounts of money, like 20 bucks, $100, and turned it into, like, millions on sniping that, like, do you, do you know of any of those cases? Because I saw a few people like popping up that, that were claiming... There were some that were like 0.5 or 0.4 to the, like multiple 100Ks, yeah. I don't know if I saw any seven figures from really small. I'm sure they existed, but a lot of times those people are like posting their P&Ls on Twitter. Like, I rarely do that, right? I mean, it's not a thing that a lot of like some of the better snipers do. Um, but I'm sure they existed for sure. Like, it was like a coin that you could have easily sized into relatively early. Sized into, like, when you have a coin and it has a decent liquidity pool, you can end up, like, taking more risk and putting more money into it. And then if you know it's going to 5, 10x from there, right, you're getting a bigger multiple on, like, a bigger sum of money. So for, like, whales or even, like, bigger players, it's a, it's a like, viable strategy versus having to, like, snipe early. So did these people just get lucky or, you know, do you think a lot of them kind of saw it coming and sniped on that, that info or that alpha? No, I think what happened is a lot of people just saw it list. A lot of people watch new pairs. So they just watch to see when things go live and then they watch to see volume. So they saw a ton of uptick and volume was being talked about in like all the chats and stuff. I even meant, I mentioned on the space is when it was like maybe 50 or a hundred million or something like that. Because I, I was, I mean, I thought it was way too high at that point, right? Um, and I think people just saw that, and then they decided to gamble a little bit, and it just kept going, and more and more people just kept doing it. And I think it topped around 300 or 400 million. So those were, like, the two big ones on base. And then more recently, uh, there was a coin called Fungi, which I actually hit. I was the top holder on, I think. So I was at my Easter festivities, uh, and I bought it in the morning for 0.5 ethereum i think maybe i did 1f and i pulled out about 20 in profits and then i still have about 20 left over unrealized and the reason i bought it was i looked at the contract and i thought the contract was really interesting and unique so a lot of times when you see a contract um it's like very straightforward you can like look at it and see it's clearly been used before but for this one i could tell there was like something different about it. Um, it just looked like it could be something special. I didn't know what the project was at all. In fact, like midway through the day, I saw it was like mooning on like my banana and I messaged uh, my friends and Inshallah and was like, what is this? Like, why is it pumping so much? Should I stop selling it basically? Cause I just didn't have time to look at it. And I looked and it was like a unique like way to do art on chain, which typically does pretty well. So that was a pretty good one that I think topped around 30, maybe 40 million um, from like sub 500k. So that was solid. And then also on base, uh, last night, there was a coin called uh, GCAT, uh, GigaCat, which I had information on because I, I knew the uh, guy who was launching it and that he was pretty good. But what ended up happening is they launched it and it like moved really hard to like 5 million in one candle uh, once I shared it and a few other people shared it. And then 
the dev like went to sleep basically, which sometimes happens with coins, and I had no idea that was going to happen, and it like dumped all the way down to like 500k or so, and it was like almost like a inadvertent shakeout, I guess, and now it's like up to six million or so again. So that's like a a good lesson I think there with like some of these coins is like let's say you have a huge cost into a coin, you buy like three F and it's worth like point two. It's almost always worth it to just not sell at that point and just see unless you know it's dead dead because a lot of times like things just revive and then you're just like mentally so tilted that that's happened like that's happened to me so many times where i bought coins and it's just been sent to zero and i'm just like well this sucks and i sell for like nothing and then i check a day later and people are talking about it everywhere and i'm like well <laughs> great yeah yeah so like i, I try and hold if, if uh, my bag is like so small that i'm just like it wouldn't impact me if i sell it I feel you. Let's go back to the pre-sale metal really quick. I know you mentioned there's a couple projects that raised 10, 12 million US dollars, and now a lot of that is changing. Maybe if you can just summarize kind of for the audience, like what, what is kind of happening in that realm, and what does it look like when you have people invest, and then that goes directly to the liquidity, and then they get the tokens? Like, why is this such a big deal? Yeah, sure. I mean, so Dino did so well, and it was such a big deal, because I think when you see something like that basically isn't working, which is like Roost and all these Solana sales, which the way they're designed is that the pre-sellers, some of them are able to sell at like decent multiples because they're up and then it just dumps. And then the team pockets a ton of money. They keep the money from the liquidity, right? They could put the money all into liquidity. And the reason they don't do that a lot of times, aside from like pure greed, is that it doesn't make sense to have huge liquidity pools because if you have a huge liquidity pool, it's harder to move it and it won't pump as much, right? So there's a technical reason for what they do, which is why they can justify doing it. Um, that said it, it doesn't really work when you have these enormous pre-sales that are at markups and could just nuke into it so something like dino wasn't really like that because the way they set it up was the liquidity pool was pretty deep and it kind of allowed people to be able to dgm with size into it and there really hasn't been uh, another one you know since i don't necessarily think that dino is like the answer or like what everyone should be doing for pre-sales but that's why it ended up doing so well you see a lot of other pre-sales like peaches right who we had on last week where they raised like a million dollars and they had very little to liquidity too it's pretty standard to add a small amount to liquidity the big thing is like you have to pay attention to what these markups on these private sales or the pre-sellers are if they're coming in and they're going to be at like 10x on the first candle right and they're 100 percent unlocked like roost was it's just going to create a situation where they're just going to dump because they kind of have to. So really quick, just going back to that, I know Peaches isn't here and I know, you know, the space and about them, so I don't want to really discuss it too much, but I'm just curious, like maybe you can give an update, like where, where did that go? How has the last few days been for yeah. you? I saw you were tweeting some drama as well in regards to that. I'm curious, <laughs> what's the, what is this? Yeah, I mean, they, uh, they did well. They hit about 20, maybe 25 million or so. Now I think they're around 13, which is a decent number. Um, Nibazon, actually, who was from the, the Peaches team, but they had a little bit of drama with, um, one of the influencers because they kind of had a disagreement and sometimes you have disagreements with influencers in the space. They take aggressive actions and this specific influencer did that and tried to say the team was selling and all sorts of crazy FUD, which was not true and is verifiable on chain. So the project's sitting around like 12 or 13 million. And as far as I know from talking to them recently, like they're trying to push still to get exposure to Dave. They have some uh, billboards outside of his office in New York City. And that's kind of where they're at. It's crazy. No, I, I think the billboard idea in just in general is like saying a lot of projects. Haven't oh, yeah. No, it's really cool. I, I was talking to... Um, a project, a deep end, pro uh, not a deep end project, a uh, proof of work project about a week ago and called Quilibrium. And she told me when she started her project, she actually put a billboard up outside of a conference in New York City and she had no testnet users. And by the time the day was over, she had over 250,000. Damn, that's incredible. Okay, so changing, uh, changing tone really quick. I, I know last week we talked about base. We talked a lot about the base ecosystem. Um, I know there's a lot new also uh, with the DGen L3. Um, but quickly, I want I want to start there. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the DGen L3. I know it's big news for a lot of people. For those that don't know what it is, maybe you need you want to explain it, and then I want to dive into Solana. Yeah, and for sure. What's happening on before chain. I so, before I get there, I do it. want to come up on a point last week. I talked about how there hadn't been any big plays on Ethereum, right? And when people are looking at other chains, there's always a big play on Ethereum or, or a chain you're not looking at. And literally, like, the next day, 
that coin chicken launched on Ethereum, which was uh, pep fork, meaning it was set up in such a way that there was like, uh, you could set the limit to whatever you want, and it had no tax, and they took 69F and they actually burned it, meaning they like sent it to OXLO, so it's never recoverable, and they actually did that a day before they launched, and still it didn't really get any attention, because just people were not paying any attention to Ethereum. And they launched, and it just like went all the way up to about 80 or 85 million or so. And the top holder in that, who most people know who that is, had a, a pretty sizable bag. And a lot of other people were able to buy relatively cheap and run it all the way up just from paying attention to like what's going on on Ethereum. It's always good to like watch a chain when you feel like it's dead, because often like that's when everyone else forgets about it, and writes it off, and that's when something happens. Okay, so now I'll talk about DGEN. So DGEN, for those of you who don't know the backstory on it, was a coin, is a coin, that came out on base chain. And when it came out, I remember seeing it around 6 or 7 million, and thinking like, wow, this thing is like really pumped. And if you looked into the wallets that were buying it, they weren't like standard wallets. They were all very like clean wallets or wallets that don't typically buy these kind of coins. So it just like looked like kind of an insider pump. And then it came out that it was uh, attached a little bit to Farcaster. And for those of you who don't know what Farcaster is, Farcaster is basically like a version of X or, or Twitter, where you basically, if you engage and use Farcaster, you can earn coins such as DGEN. So they had a partnership with Farcaster. And then if you kind of put two and two together, you can extrapolate that they maybe launched DGEN, right? That's like a pretty common theory. I'm not sure if it's proven yet. And now it's sitting at about $2 billion. But about, I want to say, two weeks ago or so, you could have bought it at around 8x cheaper the price on almost unlimited liquidity and just made whatever you wanted. And the reason that it had this big pump is they released their own blockchain called uh I think it's called DGEN chain, uh, where they're releasing coins now. And the last, like, I would say today has been slow for that chain. Yesterday was kind of slow as well. The first two days, as with, like, most new chains, it was kind of hype. So you had a lot of people buying DGEN to bridge over there and buy their coins. And when you bridged over there, you couldn't get your money out for seven days. So it created, like, this giant price push, right, for DGEN because everyone needs it. It's the gas on the chain. It's used as, like, the base currency, and they needed to buy all of these coins and all, like... Crypto Twitter was talking about all the coins that were going to be launching on DGEN. And then obviously after the first two days or so of this happening, the ruggers started going over there, which is why you saw somewhat less rugs on base and Solana. And now we're kind of at the point where I think people aren't paying as much attention to DGEN chain. And what's probably happening is people are kind of cooking up big plays there because they know people aren't paying attention to it. So I expect you'll probably see some bangers over there in the next few days too. So Tom, is, is this like the the next like base? Like, is this where all the hypey things going to go in the next like week to two weeks? Like, should people be scanning DGN chain and like looking for the next gem there? Or what's your kind of play? What's your strategy? Yeah, it's tricky. I mean, with new chains, right? The way I kind of approach them is I will give them like my time of day initially and see how they feel. If they start getting like overrun with rugs and it becomes really intensive to review coins there, I might not pay as much attention or I might use like a tracker like deck screener to just track volume there and see if like I notice anyone who's buying. With DGN Chain, their explorer, meaning like, you know, their ether scan is not really bad. It actually is kind of easy to use, so it, it's a lot more readable than normally when these chains come out. They have these horrible block explorers, which are just, like, illegible. Um, but DGN Chain actually has a pretty good one, so you can use it to find out, like, where the funding came from, if it came from a rug, relatively quickly. A really good way to check coins on DGN Chain, though, to save yourself time, is just use DBank, right, which is a website that shows, if you put a wallet in there, it shows what they hold on every single chain. So you could put their wallet in on DGEN chain, which is an EVM wallet, meaning it's like compatible on Ethereum and everything Ethereum systems. So if you put it in there, you can see what they hold on base, Solana, not Solana, sorry, base, Polygon, Optimism, all these chains, right? So you can kind of find out if they're like a whale or if they're a real wallet. And if someone's making a coin who has money on other chains, you can check those chains to see what they've done. And that process only takes like a few minutes. And that's kind of how you can probably find things that have a little higher upside because usually they'll fund from a way that makes you think it's like more attractive versus like using like a centralized exchange 
to bridge to bass by DJ and bridge over to DJ and train. Last last question for you, and then I want to I want to jump to the panel we have as well, and send out a few more invites as well. I see Sugar's here, I saw Princess SK. You guys want to come on stage? Love to have you as well. Um, but that being said, one one kind of question is just at a simple level, like for people that don't understand, like what is an L three, and like why is DJ and train like actually different, right? Obviously, we've had bass, so Solana, we've had all the hype. Why is this something actually people should care about? What is an L3? Sure, yeah, I'll be real with you. I have no idea what, the L, what an L3 is. I doubt they know what an L3 is either. But the reason that people should probably care is because, like, when a new chain comes out, it introduces hype, and people want to go on to that chain and buy new things, right? The biggest advantage of a new chain is that there's not technology for it yet. So you don't have sniper bots. You don't have scanners. Uh, so like insiders and just people who want to make coins that are successful can very easily make a coin and not have to worry about it getting sniped or like anything malicious or that they view malicious happening because simply people either aren't paying enough attention to it or it just there's no tech available to do it right that's like right now like if someone wanted to launch a crazy insider coin they could just launch it on like polygon and they kind of do or like you know mantle or one of these like chains that no one even looks at because they can do whatever they want no one's actually paying attention to the chain if you were to launch like an insider coin on tron tomorrow like i highly doubt anyone in the spaces would know what it was until someone actually like found it at like 10 million right and that's kind of the typical idea and then one final thing I'll kind of mention on the L3 side, um, from the, the research I've done, it's, it's built on top of Arbitrum Orbit and also allows for the settlement of transactions on base. So, I mean, definitely something that's new we haven't seen before, and I think there's going to be a lot to come in regards to research, but also new projects and new dApps. So, it's kind of where, where I'm going to be looking in the next couple of weeks as well. But that being said, I want to I wanna jump to um, Penske uh, real quick, and then I want to go around to everyone else. Um, what's good, Pinsky? What What's the the new plays in Solana? What have you been looking at? What's uh, What's new in that regard, dude? Um, I'm doing pretty good, man. Solana, man, Solana is like a little bit of a different beast. The last thing I was looking at was was Mew. Honestly, there's been like a bunch of like really big movers recently, and still kind of playing heavily on base chain. It seems a little bit that because a lot of the the bigger pre sale raises have had like the consistent issue where they raise a ton and then they don't add much of it to liquidity kind of like tommy was saying a little bit earlier on uh just like some of the recent even base chain launches uh it's just been like a little bit of an issue so i think it's kind of starting to move away from that side a little bit we saw mf -er absolutely go crazy so like uh yesterday there was the goblin town nft collection that had tried to essentially kind of replicate what mf -er was doing it didn't do as well, but I honestly, that's like, I think that might be kind of an upcoming narrative here is like a lot of these, like, and honestly, like, you know, we saw it with the board, the board apes, we saw those, obviously they have their own token. So it kind of makes sense that some of these other more like pretty well recognized NFT projects are starting to kind of like do tokens. And I know of even a couple right now that are going to be following the MF -er model down to like exact copy of it basically so that's kind of like i think we're moving a little bit away from the big pre-sale but you know again some some could happen and somebody raises like yeah. 50 million and, and it's all back out. right now yeah right now i'm looking really at kind of like these nft projects that are then you know kind of tacking on a so token to for it. those that don't know and then meanwhile i'll come to you um i think I think you hit it right on the nail on the head, but just to kind of summarize, projects that raise a lot, right? They raise one, two, three, four million dollars. And when they don't add all of that to liquidity, um, people that are in the private sale, they essentially start down. They actually start negative from the first buys. So unless there's enough buy volume to really like come in and actually subsidize that money that was just taken out and either pocketed or quote unquote spent on other things like marketing, um, is really just putting them at a disadvantage. And a, a lot of the pre-sale matter that we've seen recently is, you know, around these massive pre-sales of, you know, $15 million, $20 million, $25 million. But at the end of the day, you really can't add more than probably a couple hundred, maybe even half a thousand each, because after that, uh, it's so hard to push the price if there's no movement and there's no gains to really be made in any, you know, large number of multiples or Xs. So I think that that's a huge thing. But I'm curious to see where the, the meta goes in the future. But uh, Nima, let's go to you. Let's go, brother. Yeah, good, man. Thanks for having me, Sigmund. Always. Um, I, want, I wanted to piggyback off what uh, Penske was saying. Um, he's actually correct. I am getting a bunch of uh, inbound requests for, um, for advice and strategies from uh, NFT-based artists, 
uh, NFT communities, NFT art galleries, and also NFT collections to drop tokens and learn more about meme coins. And one of the things I, I told the, the first NFT DAO that I was speaking with, I, I won't name any names here, but um, I did mention it's a whole new ball game. You know, you're not just managing a community with cool art. The whole vibe is different. You're, uh, the security goes up, right? You're going to have to manage wallets a little bit better. You're going to have to have protective measures against snipers. Uh, market making, which is a huge thing, which I doubt most communities or NFT communities have ever thought of. Uh, so you're going to have to have, you know, a professional market maker. Don't try to do it yourself and just a bunch of other things. But the NFT communities are definitely looking into memes and best believe in the next few weeks or so they'll be launching. So Nima, let me ask you this. If, if I'm looking at a bunch of NFT projects, you know, I want to see which ones are going to actually make coins or, or develop tokens and to ape into like, what are you kind of doing to, to position yourself to, uh, you know, make money in that space? That's a good question. Um, I haven't really dived into the investment aspect of it just yet because I'm, I'm more building in the space than I am going around like, uh, you know, uh, trading at the moment. However, I would focus on the, the stronger teams, the teams who have a good reputation, who have done really well, who have, um, who have a positive sentiment in the space. Uh, community's got to be good. You know, your, your simple and standard uh, you know, qualifications uh, uh, when it comes to like verifying whether a project is good or not. So I would keep an eye on those. I would stay away from, God, uh, I guess the communities that uh, essentially rugged. There have been many, many NFT projects who went live and then the team just disconnected, a price dump, and those communities will come back. They will try to launch a token and get marketing teams together and try to draw up the hype and best believe the majority of them will dump again. 100%. Sugar, I want to go to you. I want to, I want to ask, just ch changing perspective really quick. I've got a lot of people hitting me up about community takeovers, a lot of projects that have quote-unquote died or been rugged in the community takes over. It, are, like, what are your thoughts on this? Is this something that's really good to look into? Are there any really successful community takeovers that we should be looking at? Because I'll just say in the last two days, I've probably had like 10 or 12 projects hit me up that are just community takeovers alone. Well, brother, it's a very funny moment to ask me that because, uh, well, I'm taking over Bird Dog. It's a Matt Fury character, you know, it's funny, whatever, paper's friend. And I can honestly say, as like an honest tape, I've invested around 1.5k soul and uh, I've only destroyed the um, KUL supply to two people because, you know, it was too high. They didn't want to buy. Everybody else was organic. And the two people I gave it to, one cheated while shilling it one of the KOLs, so his name, I mean, I, I won't even name him because, you know, we are not here to point fingers. Name and shame, Sergey. The wrong wallet, so it basically means it got burned, but then we recovered it, whatever he found it, like, and this is the kind of people, like, it made me realize how much more I appreciate devs because of this kind of retards, and then I wish I wasn't tracking wallets because then I saw some of the biggest, you know, KOLs that actually bought the tokens sell at a loss, and, like, you had to have, like, some serious fucking skills to sell at a loss. It's okay, you know, it's whatever, like, they're poor, they're poor. So, I am super connected. I'm one of the biggest KOLs on Solana, and I'm struggling to fucking do a community takeover with a bunch of very good people behind me. And it's a decent narrative. So, I would say making a community takeover run, even with a lot of funds, is almost impossible because, honestly, as much as people don't like to hear it, the only way to move something is by managing and controlling the supply. And if you don't do that, like, brother, I've invested, like, nearly 300K into marketing, and we went to, like, 5, 6, 8, 9 million many times. When I took over, it was at 200K. And every time, you know, it gets jitted by randoms that I can't control. If I had supply, it would be much easier, and they would have much less impact on the chart. And, like, you can jit it once, you can jit it twice, but eventually, I'm going to win, right? Because I hold the majority. So that's one thing. The other thing is, when people usually do community takeovers, they're in it for themselves. They want their fucking exit. They are down bad, and they're literally shitting it just so they can show it down someone else's throat, and then it becomes someone else's issue. So you have a, a unity of like people that wake up with bags. Like, brother, it has happened to me too because I hold everything. I wake up a day, and I have a, a bag of 100K in some random Harold coin. The fuck am I going to do? Hold it? I don't know who took over. I don't know why it's pumped. I, I have no idea what it is. Like, I don't blame them, you know? turn on the DCA on fucking Jupiter and nuke it to zero. So community takeovers, making them work, only works when there's like a very serious cabal with serious money behind it. And it's almost impossible to make them succeed. So out of like a hundred, maybe one or two will succeed. 
those are my two cents and I wouldn't get involved. Like it's not worth the stress in a bull market to be saving someone else's bags. Sure, all I gotta say is if you're waking up to having some of your coins go from, you know, nothing to hundreds of thousands of dollars and you don't know why, man, that sounds like a pretty damn good problem to have. So you might have to start sending me this stuff if, uh, if that's what you're actually waking up to on a daily basis. Hey, but brother, to be honest, um, like, that happens in like three projects and then the other 200, you're fucking keep looking at zero. And sometimes the funniest thing is you will sell, you know, that fucking trash with, there's a thing called Pooper Scooper on Solana. It's from the bonk uh, team. And like, it sells all your dust into bonk. And brother, I made like 50K in bonk just from selling dust. Sometimes you remember you had a coin. There is one particular occasion of this shit called Benji. It's like Taylor Swift dog. And I bought like two or three percent. Shit went to zero. And I'm not talking zero, like straight zero. And, you know, Pooper Scooper sold it. I go back thinking I have like, you know, a million dollars in it. And it's actually zero. So, you know, it works both ways. But I, I would just like, if you're trading shit coins, I would be okay with losing all of your investment because you're actually looking for a 10x, right? Who buys a shit coin to scalp it or to make 2x? Like, you have to be a fucking retard. But just buy Solana, buy Say, buy something, you know, to flip. But if you buy a shit coin to, to sell it at 2x, brother, you got fucking issues and I don't think I can help you with that. I fucking love the DJ and Space Sugar. Nima, let's go back to you. Thanks, man. Um, I have a question for Sugar. What is your take on the pre-sale meta for Solana right now? I know we slowed down a bit, but what does the future scope look like? You, know, you literally deserve to lose money if you participate to pre-sales in shitcoins. Like, your, your brain is wired in such a way that you just enjoy being exit liquidity. And there's nothing more retarded than that. Like, think about it. Some of the best fucking projects on Solana, delivering the best tech ever, raised like a million dollars during the bear market. And they're changing your life. Every day you're using them, right? They're providing you value. And now some fucking... Pinky Ponky Po comes from Ethereum or wherever the fuck, or even from Solana, I don't give a fuck, I'm not a racist. And he raises like 50 mil for what? And then sometimes the, the motherfuckers misclick and then they become heroes? Like, are we for real? Like, how fucking autistic do you have to be to praise somebody? Because yes, he pumped the token, but he basically rugged thousands of people. Welcome to Solana, brother. And, you know, I think it's disgusting and it's also crazy that people just idolize this kind of behavior oh he fucking he, he broke the, the next big thing you know so yeah if you a pre-sales you deserve to lose money chances are in 90 percent of the cases uh, you're just making the devs rich in a direct way like they don't even have to sell the tokens how retarded is that yeah but yeah i hope this answers if you have anything more specific feel free to ask the big thing with uh, the pre-sales on Solana, too, is the real people who are making money there are the botters, because the way it's structured is in such a way that, basically, you have this period of time where only the botters and snipers are buying, right, when it's listed, and then there's a wait, and then there's, like, an airdrop of tokens, so during that period of time, you just have a lot of people kind of gambling. And they're able to make so much. And then it also hurts the pre-sellers because what ends up happening is it just kills any volume on the chart. Like, if you look at that coin, Trippy, right? That's what happened there. One of the botters made, like, $9 million uh, just from the well, I to mention that. Literally, one of the best projects ever, probably the only legit pre-sale on Solana, we know, with a serious team. Like, bro, the Trippy team, like, I don't want to suck dick. I ate, like, 300 so you know, not at the bottom, but a very good entry because I knew that fucking snipers would rape it. They were just not ready for a shitcoin. They're NFT guys. They're among the most plugged on planet Earth. Like, they have access to everybody, you know. All the, I knew it would eventually go up. Guess fucking what? Welcome to Solana. Some random 16-year-old will make $9 million while they're there exploiting your connections to make shit succeed. Is it fair? No. But, hey, uh, this is the game we play. Hate the game, don't hate the player, in my opinion. And, you know, again... If you really were to do pre-sales, I would suggest another chain where, like, when you launch it, you can fucking rape those motherfuckers with, with taxes. At least the team eats it and then can put it back into chart and all that jazz. So that's my two cents on that side. And I think this is getting solved on Solana with, like, the new standards where you can kind of set taxes, like, on the Flux thingy and all that stuff. I'm not super technical, but I'm sure there's yeah. ways well, to... Well, there's going to be LBPs kinda... coming on Solana too, right? I think yeah. one form yeah. or whatever is going to come out there. Um, that'll there's have some meta. Already. What was that? Uh, there is already pink sale on Solana, and there's this shit that's called Solana Pod that I discovered, like, this week. And, you know, there's some very good people launching there, and you can't even rug it because it's on-chain, and, you know, I mean... Uh, the, the platform could rug, but the actual project 
well, I mean, yeah, in crypto, everything could always rug, but, you know, it, it's more risk because you, you can only get rugged once on a platform and then it's going to lose its rep while a yeah. single dev could do whatever he wants if you send to a random wallet. You know, I didn't even know about that dust seller you mentioned. Like, usually on Solana, I literally don't sell anything because there's been so many instances where I just sell something for, like, one soul and then I look back and it's, like, insanely high, you know, a week later. But I, I had no idea where that exists because it doesn't exist as far as I know on Ethereum because I've had people say, like, hey, this should exist. I'm going to have to look at that. Uh, the big problem on Ethereum is, like, Brother, on one wallet, uh, like especially my bank bot, um, people track me and one day I see like 20 DMs, yo bro, what the fuck are you doing? And like those motherfuckers received something like 350 notifications because I, I used Pooper Scooper on my bank bot and it like it went wild, you know, it sold all those balances that were like, you know, tensile investments into fucking $50 or oh, not even like 30 bucks and just at one time, boom, it becomes bonk. So... I would advise against it, but if you really have a lot of shit and you're never going to have time to looking at it, probably it's a good option, you know, because at least, you know, in due time, bulk will probably go up. It kind of frees it from your mind. You don't have to think about it. Like the thing that bothers me the most is we all of us already have a lot of bags, right? At least the people I know, the digits I know. Every day we buy something new, we trade, we hold, we do whatever. But eventually at the end of the day, like we, we always keep in the kind of in the uh, back of our heads, like, oh, shit, I bought that, like, a week ago. It was such a good narrative. I wish, like, Ansem would tweet about it and, like, kind of yeah. have a community takeover. So I wouldn't necessarily sell. Just start a new wallet and start ignoring the one, like, remove all the valuable assets. That's my, my two cents. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes sense. That's kind of how I look at it, too. I go and I try and check anything that's, like, purely dead where I just see there's no hope of it living. And in that case, like, I'll end up getting rid of it. But in most cases, I just kind of wait because, like, we talked about earlier, like, if you sell, like, one Solana or 0 0.05 Ethereum, it's really, for most people, it's not going to change things, assuming you're playing with, like, the money you would play with if you're buying with those sizes. And, like, you're just going to regret it so much if you look back in a week and you see, you know, Sugar tweeting about it, about, like, how it's, like, you know, 2 billion market cap or something like that, which has happened a lot for a lot of people. Okay, so we have a new speaker. I'm going to try and get him on. So, Matt, really? are you able to, to talk? Yeah, how's it going, guys? Hey, man, how's it going? You want to just introduce yourself, maybe talk about, like, some of the processes you use on Solana? Yeah, sure. I really appreciate you guys having me on. Basically, been degening since early 2021. Yeah, so it's been, it's been a bit, and then uh, several different chains was most comfortable on EVM for a while. And then I realized how the token standards on uh, Solana are really easy for the layman, right? Because digging through those deployments on the EVM, it could be a little bit right curve uh, for most people, right? And it's high EV. So I think what I've been working on mostly, uh, most recently is trying to build a framework around expected value of different strategies. And so when I listen here to a lot of like, the right curve tactics around scanning new deployments for alpha. It allows people to get, you know, really high EV returns. They're monetizing their time and their intelligence to put a small bet in to get asymmetric returns, which I really appreciate it from a, an EV perspective. And so as a kind of more of a layman, to be honest, uh, I, I tend to search out um, lower hanging fruit in terms of opportunities, right? Opportunities for the layman. And what that looks like for me is kind of being terminally online <laughs> and scouring uh, people posting for certain things. And uh, some, you know, you get lucky, you're at the right place at the right time. But uh, again, uh, it being EV positive, I'm monetizing me being terminally online uh, with the fact that if I notice somebody posting like a huge account, post some with like small market cap, that's my time. That's my time to yeah. time. So. You know, got a lot of different strategies for mid curves, and <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. You guys, like, there there are several different ways you can make it out here. You go to the right of the curve, you go to the left of the curve. I feel like many. I don't feel like people they they play down the mid mid side of the curve, but that's where most people are. That's where most people are. We got <laughs> we got to figure out how to make money from the middle of the curve too. You know. So, all right, I mean, that's a really good point. Like personally, I really don't spend a lot of time like watching my timeline for people talking about coins and stuff. And I am terminally online. You know, I'm just one of those guys who's literally just like scanning contracts and stuff like that. That's just kind of how I do it, right? 
but it's always good to hear a different point of view. Like there's a lot of ways that you can play in the space, you know, and find success. I've seen a bunch of times you've tweeted about like coins where you've like taken it over from like something that's dumped like severely, right? You come in and like grab the bottom. Right, right. That's another kind of like layman strategy is to kind of figure out who's talked about tokens in the past, whose names are attached to tokens. I follow a lot of people who I view as kind of upstream um, towards the bigger influencers who I've known have touched tokens in the past, who I know are loyal to their tokens, who more or less are willing to promote them again, even after they've died. These, to me, I see them as high EV plays because expected value, I view it in terms of like likelihood of success multiplied by degree of success. You know, what are the odds? And then if that plays out, what's the upside, right? And so I notice it's actually high EV to see when somebody has their name attached to a coin who's likely to revisit that coin, it dies. And then lo and behold, it's a pretty high chance they do revisit it. And it's high EV for me. And it's for the layman. I'm not over here like scouring code. You know? Yeah, no, I mean, that's super helpful. And I know you have like a channel that you do all this on, right? Yeah, yeah. So I have like a, a YouTube and a Twitch. They're kind of like, I don't know, deprecated at this point. Um, I'm going to ramp them up, you know, eventually is doing live streams, scouring the newer contracts on a deck screener. Not the new deployments, but the ones that are already live, because then I can get an idea of the volume that's kind of uh, coming in without having to, you know, basically spend all the time digging through each deployment, which is a full-time job, but it's extremely high EV. But for me, spending more time seeing what's already launched, getting volume, especially in this new uh, meta where there are a lot of NFT old money promoting new launches, that to me has been another uh, decent EV trade where I can more or less, do, yeah. you know, Determine what kind of meat is on the bones between when I see that something is getting traction uh, compared to, say, some of the targets I've seen other things with similar amount of social capital involved uh, hit in terms of targets. So I get an idea of how much meat is on the bones, and it's more or less uh, how early can I build conviction um, to, to, to monetize that meat on the bones, right? Because it's kind of like trading shit coins, necessarily, in, in my opinion, it's like, you're looking to monetize the efforts of other people, right? And that's yeah, PvP. That makes sense. Um, and if it's PvP, I mean, you know, people can look at me like, oh, you're super PvP. But I'm like, come on. You know, it is what it is, especially if the tokens only last like 48 hours, 72 hours in most cases. So it only becomes not PvP when you really do have hope that this thing's going to go to a centralized exchange, make it to the bull run. Then you're on the bus with other people. You hold your moon bag. It's a different mentality, right? Now you're not looking like, oh, monetize this guy's effort because he's an NFC you know, head with 140,000 followers tweeting about a coin that's 3 million mark cap. And I know that I got like 7 million mark cap meat on the bones, you know? So uh, that, that's kind of my thought process for the current meta. And then as the meta changes, you know, I change with it. And so I've I been, a, been a kind of like a, a um, how should I, an enjoyer of uh, pump.fun <laughs> as a smaller player. Because I'm not a whale, you guys. Like, there's like, a lot of uh, whales that do uh, certain activities in the market. But one activity for smaller players, like myself, it's the pump.fun. I love pump.fun. So it's like, it's a, a fair launch. You guys probably have gone over it in the space before. And what I like about it is that there, it's not, it's, 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 you know how they say chess, not checkers? This is checkers, not chess, right? It, <laughs> there's no allocation to the devs. There's no, uh, it's basically a fair launch. And so it's, it's pure PVP in the sense that the only person who can beat you is the person who bought before you, right? And so that is a perfect game for me to play. And so I, yeah. I enjoy that game. Pumped Off Fun is really cool. I messed around a little bit on there. There is a tremendous amount of volume, though, of like people making coins. It's kind of insane how many people are making there. Because the way it works for people who don't know is like basically you make the coin there. Anyone can make a coin there, and they fund it. And how I understand it is when it hits to I think seven. It's probably sixty nine k if I had to guess off the top of my head. <laughs> when it gets to sixty nine k, uh, it automatically takes that liquidity and I think it burns it and then transfers out the tokens that you bought on Pump dot which is a different website, uh, to different holders and adds it to Radium where it trades like officially. Okay, I'm gonna pass it to Siggy so he can hop on. Okay, perfect. No, I appreciate it, Bill. Uh, real quick, I want to go to Ivan or AI Ivan. 
Um, I want to get your take on uh, Solana, what's currently happening, what the plays are. Um, I believe you're you're the core contributor between a, a few things, if I'm not mistaken, that have got over 100 million. So, hey, Ivan, uh, go for it. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're good. What's up? Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I uh, actually just want to bring up a couple things. I mean, Sugar, you had some fucking hilarious points there. I actually was busting a gut here just a few minutes ago listening to you talk. Um, you know, the thing that with Solana plays and stuff right now, in my opinion, um, you know, 80, 90 percent is a facade, guys. Like, yeah, millions are made. But at the end of the day, you know, the plebs are making it. Like, the whales are making it. They're moving the markets. Like, you can see it. It's evident. You know, fair launch is never fair. You know, that you can get the, the odd ball. Okay, yeah, maybe you'll, you know, get the next Pepe or whatever. But those things are just pretty much impossible to get, in my opinion. Um, if you're going to search for those, there's a, there's a basic strategy, in my opinion. You know, throw, throw five bucks in and hold the damn thing to $10 billion market cap. I mean, look at Bonk, right? Like, we're actually pretty close with the, with the Bonk guys ourselves. Um, they're, they're actually in the same city as, as, as us and our team. Um, and we literally watched them. We had a partnership with, uh, with Ken and Bonk actually back in August. I think they were like 20 million market cap. And, and then, you know, come November, it's like, you know, two, three billy. Um, and getting on, getting listed on Binance. But that was not like a fluke, right? Um, when everybody gave up on it, you know, market makers took, took over and there was and everybody already had known who Bonk was so that was like a prime operation to take control and you know it pushed everybody uh, pushed everybody out and that stuff happens all the time but you got to be patient um, manage your risk if there's I don't know hundreds of tokens being deployed SPL tokens on Solana I mean you know, throw five bucks at it, but hold the damn thing. You know what I mean? If you're if you're gonna flip your shit for like a two X, what's the point? And and, I'm, and it's funny too is also, you know, all this community takeover and stuff like dev, you know, dev rug this and that. Like, you, know, you got to be accountable for your for your investments at the end of the day, right? And the, and the best thing to do, invest just a little bit in a lot of stuff and just hold it. Um, the bull run Absolutely. is just getting started. It's just getting started, in my opinion. So. So Ivan, I'll, I'll go back to you, and then uh, we'll go to a few other people on, on stage as well. Like currently, like w what are the Solana plays you're looking at? What's the meta? What, what's obviously the word? I mean, you know, a lot of people here are, are listening as well. Like, um, you know, what, what are you looking at at the moment? Are, are you looking at community takeovers? Are you looking at our tokens? Are you sniper? Like, what does that look like? Well, we're looking at um, doing a strategy with uh, which is a lot different. So, I mean, you know, you guys are talking about pre sales and stuff like. What I like to see is more structured things. You know, if there's going to be a pre-sale, I mean, it better damn be private because you want to have the good guys in at the beginning, right? Like, you don't want to have a, a public sale with plebs in it and then you just, you know, let it go, whatever. Like, that's not really a, a strategy, in my opinion. Um, so what we're focusing on here is, is more of, like, the long-term stuff, you know, finding the right people to get involved. In, uh, in our projects, like the, the one that we did right now uh, with some of the uh, alpha guys in our group, we did a uh, Gary Banking on Solana, and it's, you know, we've been getting some good feedback on it, but a lot of people are like, oh, you know what, it's, uh, it's the, the market cap's too high. But I mean, at the end of the day, if we want to get hitters in and you want to incentivize them for the long term, you have to create value. Like, you can't do this with a 500K market cap. And if a pleb is complaining about it, like, dude, you're just going to miss out. I'm sorry. Like, if, if you want to play that roulette game, you know, go right ahead. But uh, the structured way works. You know, we did it for our past projects. You know, I mean, look at Moon Tropica. It was trading sideways for um, a solid year and a bit. And then, boom, one day it's up 100x. Like, this, this stuff happens, guys. Like, you just have to be patient and look at longevity of, of plays, right? Um, I think a lot of people are too focused on just the launch. And that's where you're going to... Um, that's where you're going to lose. If you're not going to sell day one, then yeah, you're you're a loser. Like the the chances of it uh, continuing on is very low. So I don't know what you guys think about that, but I mean that's just like my two cents. So happy to take uh, feedback in. Um, 
But yeah. Wow. So did you just mention that you're the Moon Tropica dev and you made Barry Banking? Uh, Gary Banking on Solana. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned that you did Ka too, which is pretty wild because Ka is, is a really big coin on F. Yeah. I mean, I had some. I mean, I'm not the, you know, core core guy, but uh, you know, we we have a team and um, you know we all play our roles. Um, I don't want to take the reins of everything, but uh, yeah, like uh, you know, we learned a lot from that project and still are learning. Wow, that's um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna take all those learnings and all those connections. I mean, we just actually we got we got Becker and and a few guys, big guys behind us now, and we want to bring that into everything Becker. that we start. Oh, it's Becker, yeah. So, yeah, we want to take all that, all those connections, and uh, you know, bring it into everything that we got going on moving forward. Like that's that's the deal. So, for Barry Banking, like, how, what percentage of the floor would you say you own there? Since it's trading at about like twenty five mil, right? Yeah, with, with Gary Banking, um, I mean, it's it's pretty much the ca the community guys that that are holding the floor right now. Okay, um, a lot of them. Well, actually, all of them are like the initial contributors are all locked for six months, so they can't even dump on you. And honestly, Wait, Bonk okay. had a very similar strategy. Um, it's not about you know getting dumped on day one. It's about you know slowly unlocking it over a longer period, and it's worked very well for the Bonk team. So we kind of took a piece out of there um, and then tweaked it a little bit. And then I came up with this stuff. And then, I mean, a lot of people say, you know what, meme coin with a little bit of utility, you know, that this shit sucks. But, I mean, we're going to we're gonna go for it, man. Like, we're going to, the token actually has a use case. You know, you vote what Gary's going to do, um, and Gary will build it for you. So that's what the token is going to be. And, and it might sound stupid, but, uh, you know, stupid things make big moves. So that's what I'm are. curious, and then we'll move to someone else. I just want to ask, like, for... The stuff that you've obviously done, how do you, how have you got such big people? Because I obviously know, like, I think you said before, like, Pentoshi, Alex Becker, um, you know, a lot of these guys, like, they don't really hop on stuff. So, like, what, what is the, you know, how, how, if someone's starting a project, how do they do that? Well, you kind of have to, um, I mean, they get pitched all the time, right? So, you have to have a good value prop. I mean, for us, with, with Cal, we didn't do a capital raise. We kind of just, like, built in the bear. Um and took a, a huge beating during that time, and they saw a lot of value in that, and the tokenomics were not all messed up. Um, and then, yeah, like, I mean, we, you know, we talk strong game, but, you know, we've been in space for a while and, and learned lots, so and they, they kind of bought into it, and, um, yeah, now we got a, a pretty good roll of of guys that are willing to help us out for the long term and I mean it's honestly I'll, I'll, I'll be real with you guys like a lot of the big guys out there like they're actually really really good um, I remember I had a very skewed perception of KOLs I guess uh, a while ago you know they all like dump and, and whatever I mean uh, you guys know some of the issues that uh, some of these other tokens get you know you get one pissed off guy who dumps his bag and then there's FUD and all that stuff um but like the real, real big guys that um, you know that we got, they're very. They, like number one, they say no to a lot of people. I mean, uh, you know, Becker was actually pissed at us because the community was so uh, was so um, vocal in his comment section, and we had to warm up to him. But now, you know, we, we got it done. So that's kind of it. And yeah, I mean, if you're a project and you want to get their attention or something, I mean, you got it. It's not about spam in their inbox. It's about uh, networking and, and finding the right people and, and getting them to believe in you and your story and, and what you're building. Um, and, and that could be a, a meme coin. It could be anything. But just remember, too, like when you're deploying a meme coin, I mean, I was getting my hair cut the other day, and uh, a couple guys were like, oh, man, we're thinking of spending a, setting a meme coin. You know, can we, you know, anyone that would, uh, you know, we could pay 500 bucks, you know, get this thing going, pay for some tweets, like these big guys do not do that. And if, if somebody's actually contacting you to do that type of stuff, they probably have a fake following and have no no reach. So you gotta watch watch yourself. And that's why ninety nine point nine percent of this stuff doesn't make it. So 
Yeah. Cool. Right, you need to too. Yeah, sure. So, Maki, you're uh, a little bit of a contentious figure right now. We were talking about pre-sales earlier um, and, and raising a bunch of money. You want to come on and, and talk about what just went down with you? Sure. Yo, Mario, what's up? Been a while. Um, so, I have my son, Popa Opa, and I was looking at him, and I'm like, man, he's he's way cuter than Doge, Shibo, Whiff, and I'm like, all right, motherfuckers, can to give them a run for their money, see if we could flip them, and um, we were, like, thinking, do we go to Blast, or do we go to Solana, uh, and, then, and then right before we launched, base was coming up strong, right, so... We even discussed, like, is it a multi-chain? It was like, dude, it's a meme coin. Don't overthink it. And then, like, um, but we're like, Blast has, like, that native yield, you know? And then, like, what was cool is, like, so many people around me were like, no, it's Solana, man. Meme coin, let's go Solana. So we're saying, all right, fuck it, let's go Solana. But um, we do have people on the team, a lot of devs, a lot of, a lot of people around were, like, our DeFi guys. And they thought of, you know, one guy just came up with the idea and it's like, hey, no meme coin has done it before, which is we'll take the Solana, we'll stake it, and then we'll pair Popa Opa with the uh, stake Solana. That way it's like it's got passive income. And everybody knows passive income is what? The key to general generational wealth, the key to, in, you know, being rich, right? So we're like, all right, cool, a meme coin with the passive income. And we've solved, like, you know, the blast issue of having, like, a native yield where we, we wanted to be on blast because there's, like, native yield. But instead, we'd be here on Solana with native yield. So we are like, oh, yeah, that's, that's the best idea. And the, the other problem, uh, not problem, but, like, I heard mentioned on stage is, like, try not to add utility to your meme coin or try not to do too much, you know, overthink it kind of thing. And... Um, too bad, you know, we just overthink, I'm discussing, everybody, everybody's having fun, and when we, we threw the address out there, um, you know, we became the number one, the biggest raise of any meme coin. Um, you know, in high, 2020 hindsight, there's, there's uh, cons to that, because it seems like we sucked all the liquidity out of the market, there's none left, but there's also the culture of, uh, of selling right off the bat, which we did notice, um, just right off the bat, everybody's just selling, selling the tokens, and that was pretty um, eye-opening. Um, and and I've been going on spaces like since since the launch. I've been on like you know four or five spaces, Chinese and English-speaking spaces, um, to so-called face the music. And it's like, um, and and then you know, this is PvP for sure. It feels like every other meme coins community came after us and came after us hard. You know, everybody on the timeline is just making shit up. And, um, you know, they, they just spread rumors, you know, stole the money, you know, all this stuff. And, and we played in the meme coin, you know, making jokes, trolling people, you know, like bought a new dog house. Um, let me let me pin the, the, the house I just bought for, for Popa Opa to the top. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a, a wild ride. We learned a lot. Um, well, I don't know. We didn't learn shit. So this stuff is pretty low IQ. So let me ask you, man. Yeah. So like you've been in the space a while, right? So, you know, if you're thinking about it, like logically, like being real, right? If you raise that much money and you give pre-sellers like a mark, right? You know that they're going to sell, right? So that's like kind of like it's a hundred percent going to happen. So you have to go into that knowing that's going to happen, right? And then on top of that, you didn't, you kept money, right? Like, kept, isn't that how it went down? Kept money and did what? Like, from the raise, didn't you guys pocket, like, a bunch of the funds? Yeah, see, that's bullshit, man. Don't don't talk bullshit. You're, you're one of those motherfuckers. All right, so, so, so tell right? me, so tell me what out. happened. Pocket it. So where's that money now? Yeah, I bought the new doghouse up top. I pinned it to the top. So, so tell me what happened then. If you, like, where did the money go? It didn't go into liquidity, right? Well, Which makes sense. You can the blockchain. You can't it's do that. It's called right? It's real simple. You pl it, it's staked into Solana. It's it's staked into uh, BSOL, which is Blaze Soul. It's a staking service. So the the Solanas they're yielding already. Okay, what's the, and then you're going to distribute out the and you're going to distribute out the yields to holders. Is the plan? Uh, I think we should build protocol on liquidity with that. With that. With the with the uh, staking yield. Okay, in the so sense that you're gonna liquidity meaning like the the community, the token holders 
have a, a bigger liquidity pool. Yeah. Okay, what's your liquidity pool now? 30 mil, about 30 million US. It, it was as high as 42.5, but so about 12.5 million have sold out since since the beginning of the launch. Got it. And you raised you raised 60, so 42. you put 42. 42. 42. Okay, so you put you put 30 into the pool. Well, no, you wouldn't have put no, 30 into the pool because it's not off there. 30, and we put um, okay. So we had some state. Uh, so as liquidity too. So at the high, or actually, I think it was fourteen point five, and we add two more, two more mil uh, to backstop it because it got pretty low, and that was sixteen point five total. Was the amount that was in, in the in the pool. okay yeah, and then the rest so, of state, the rest of the whatever remaining out of forty two, I, I guess that's what twenty six, twenty six five or twenty six was was just it's just chilling in in state uh, soul. Didn't God, okay. on that, that one transaction, yeah. But, you know, a lot of people like you and other people are like, you pocketed it. And, of course, all the other meme coin enemies, these other motherfucking tribal motherfuckers are like, yeah, they're trying to propagate that bullshit. And, and I think they scared a lot of people off. And a lot of people dumped at a loss, which, you know, only, like, um, keeps pushing, you know, more. You know, it's a negative uh, wheelhouse, right? But... Yeah. Eventually, it petered out low enough that people were like, fuck, I get in at cheaper than the pre-sale with like 60% off, 50% off the pre-sale. They start aping back in. And then what's funny is I, I go on these spaces and I'm asking, I would like to know the mentality of anybody that bought or sent the money in and then sold right at the beginning. Like you trusted me or you like what I do or you like like how cute Popa Opa is and you believe that this is going to be the next big coin right and and of course i i gotta bring up like there were a lot of people that said you're raising way too much you know you're taking in too much so the cons of that is like they said is like there's not going to much be much liquidity left if everybody wanted to buy it got it got in right but again this is like the fairest launch at yeah. any mean point ever like no kll nobody got an allocation and i got hit up like crazy hey can, can I get in cheap? Can I get it? You know, all, I know tons of VCs. I know tons of big investors and they all wanted it in cheap. I said, get in with everybody else. It's a fucking um, fair launch. Everybody gets in and gets in. And then we kept it even more fair. On the launch, instead of an airdrop, we did a claim. And if you're like, you know, of course, when it goes down, everything's a problem. But I'm like, an airdrop isn't fair. I, I'll just airdrop my friends first before I get it to you. Or it's a claim and everybody has it at the exact same time. So that, that's as fair as it gets. The other fair thing is this. Every bot, every dev around me knows how to write bots. Fucking there's Hanwe, CBB, the, the king, king botters are all around me. I know them all. And they're waiting to snipe this fucking contract. What did I do? I posted the contract address on my Twitter account so that everybody has a chance to snipe it or get in first. There's no, and even the normal people that don't even have bots are like, hey, give me the contract address five minutes before you launch it. No, nah, it's a fair fucking launch. The fairest launch out of any meme coin. So we posted the contract address before it went. Now, again, I was really... And, and here's the other thing, right? So the thing about raising $42.5 million, the con of it is that it, it didn't pump as hard as everybody wanted it to in the beginning. And even then, we had um, these quants, kids that are like that do sims and everything, run what's the liquidity that we should have. And if there's this much buy volume... What, what results are going to happen. And then so in the end, they ended up with what I said, which is 14.5 million in liquidity to, to launch it and then 16.5 eventually. That was the number they came up with that they thought would be good for an overall launch. So we went with their suggestions. And again, we, we just rebalanced the liquidity because they gave new suggestions in the meeting today. And we, we, we like, okay, cool. Let's, let's, go, let's go with what they say, which looks like it. It, it was looking good until the market took a dump, but... Um, overall, I feel pretty good about where the project's at. The only thing is, again, um, the, the, the only thing good about the 42.5 million raise was that every exchange hit me up, like ASAP, like, hey, we want to list you, we want to list you, we want to be the, the one to partner with you. And I'll be honest, I was cocky as far as like, all right, hold on, let me launch this first. I'm busy, let's launch this, and then we'll talk. And... Um, of course, after a botch launches in like everybody and the botch launch isn't a technical botch launch. It's a botch launches and everybody is like, um, is selling. It's like, dude, you guys are not, of course, now that I heard everybody else's mentality. Yeah. 99% of these memes are going to die. So 
all you guys are dumping out. But we're the one meme with passive income that the state sold. So the LP is always growing. So the, so the value of this, of, of these tokens are always growing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I think, I think like it's, it's like something like very, um, it was in plain sight, but no one knew about it. Or again, sometimes with these meme coins, all you're doing is gambling. You just want to get in and get out and who, who cares? And even the project owners don't care. But this is my fucking son, Popa Opa, and and I want him to flip Doge, Sheep, and Whiff. So I ain't fucking around like these other motherfuckers. Yeah, all right, that man. Launch, man. So that was the first launch of all time. <laughs> Does anyone else want to add any talk to Maki about the launch? Have any thoughts? I, you know, I'll be real. I, like I said, um, I didn't look yeah, at Soul Scout. I don't know. It. And then this Davidson guy says, I want to answer his questions. I don't know why he hey, says that. I didn't. Down. One, I didn't say. I said, I heard you pocketed it. I'm still not confirmed. <laughs> I heard, haven't checked on chain, heard. right? So. You heard. You heard. I heard. That's right. I, I think that if you are doing passive yield, you definitely shouldn't be putting it in liquidity. You should do like revenue distribution for sure. Hey, can that's I a cleaner speak, way to do it. Can I speak on the launch really quick? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I just want to say I think it was an insanely fair launch. Um, I'm I'm personally, you know, I contributed to the pre-sale. I, I'm super stoked about the yield being generated for you. Um, and yeah, I just want to say thank you, man. Nice, we got a hodler. Let's go. Davidson, you have your hand up. Let's go to you. Yo, what's up, guys? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll be honest. I, I didn't hear anything from uh, from Machi. Uh, I think it has to do with, like, uh, two days ago and on Saturday. Uh, he's done, like, a space when he answers uh, people. And I came up on stage and, you know, started to ask, uh, ask him a few questions because I put uh, a lot of money into the pre-sale and I just got, like, kicked out of the space um and uh then yesterday i tweeted about it and much he said that he's gonna uh he has no problem doing like a space with me um to answer questions and we're here so <laughs> if you're still behind your word i'm here feel free because you don't follow me so i cannot dm you uh if you want to follow me or hit my dms we'll schedule any time we'll do this space um and I, I honestly would love to hear because I couldn't hear anything since you kicked me out of the space. So I think it got me muted or something. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure if he's hearing me now or not. But uh, let me know what you think and we'll set it up. Can you hear him? I'm, throwing out, the, I'm throwing out the 100 and I'm in. Let him know I'm in. I'm down. Okay. Yeah, he, yeah Siggy said he couldn't hear him either. either. Yeah, follow Okay, again. yeah, that's what he was asking I for. I didn't hear any of that. Oh, yeah, so he just said he, he tried to set up a spaces with Maki and he couldn't talk to him. He thinks maybe he has him muted or something. That was all it was. Hey, guys, I got to get off, but thank you so much for having me. Always oh, appreciate you. Appreciate you, too. For sure, man. Catch cool. you right. later. See ya. Awesome, cool. Uh, Unisol, let's go back to you. We'll go back to a few speakers, and then um, honestly, we probably should wrap it up pretty soon. We're at about the hour mark. Uh, we'll end with some information, and then uh, we'll also yeah, cool. uh, give a little run up to what's happening next week. So, yeah, I'll let you go to a few other speakers if you want, and then let's uh, let's close this out. Yeah, sure. I don't think we went to Mr. DJ. Mr. DJ, I want to talk about any wins you've had in the last week or so. All right, sounds good. So. I mean, we hey, can talk. Oh, wait, sorry. We have, uh, I, yeah, got, I got somebody. Oh, you're good? Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, my w most recent wins have been on base, honestly. Like, a lot of the, I did catch, um, Nub. I also caught Moo, but then I sold Moo on a dip, and then I rotated. Yeah, Moo was a devastating yeah. coin, man. I bought that, yeah. too, and, like, I sold, and I knew the team didn't sell. And I was just like, you know, it's probably going to send to like a bill or something. But I was like, probably, you know, I need my Solana. I don't have a, I don't have a lot of money on Solana. I only lose there for the most part. So I was like, you know, let me be a little conservative. I'll sell out because I went pretty heavy in it. And then it just like absolutely giga sent, you know, obviously. Yeah, honestly, I, I've had the same results really on Solana. A lot of my tokens that have moon is like shit I've forgotten about. And I'm just like waking up to like whatever amount. Oh, of yeah. Money. That's like, the move. Yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, other than that, not really much. Fair enough, Rowdy. I'll let you. You got your hand up. Go ahead. 
Hey, what's up? Yeah, I want to talk about the what's going on on Solana recently. So we've had like a cat coin trend, and I wanted to go more into the game theory of Nub versus Mew. So you know, you had you had Nub, which started as you know very organically, a uh, super small market cap, and you know within a week it kind of ran up to you know 100 million market cap, a little more now. And on the opposing side, you had Mew, which was, you know, something very insider. You saw the team sniped around 43% of the supply. Um, I don't think they've sold much, if any of it. And it's kind of interesting to note that, you know, there's one, which is Mew, a high liquidity play versus Nub, which has way less liquidity, but it has more of an organic community, like, feel to it. So I'm kind of curious your thoughts. What matters most when you see two new tokens in the same, you know, narrative is the volume a big factor that you pay attention to? Um, is it holders? Because, you know, we saw Pepe, you know, was the first token that cornered a big chunk of supply and never sold. And that kind of allowed it to run up so high. So, you know, I've been trading Nub and Mew, you know, both of them in between. But it's curious to see Mew kind of, you know, pull out ahead ROI-wise, uh, even though a large percent of the supply is cornered and it has such high liquidity. Yeah, sure. I mean, like, I think the way I look at some of these things is I try to think about what the way the team is able to make the most money from it and, like, what their strategy is going to be, right? Or if it's not the team, like, the insiders, like, how do I align myself with what they're likely going to do? So that's why I was annoyed with myself for how I played Mew. Um, but I did have, like, small liquidity constraints just because I don't have a lot of money bridged on the Solana and I keep sending it to pre-sales. But basically, like, <laughs> with Mew... If you think about it, and you know the team owns a ton of supply, which everyone knew, it was all over the place. Like, oh, the team moved in money from OKX, and they bought the whole supply, they own the supply. Well, that's good, right? If they're not selling the supply, then that's a good thing. That's, like, literally, like, a floor that's not going anywhere, right? Until, inevitably, it does, right? But at the point it starts moving, you can then react at that point, right? So I think that's why Mew kind of took off like that. And also, Mew has, like, such heavy liquidity, right, that you're able to take bigger risks in it you can ape like 200 300 400 solana into that and then easily ride it all the way up from like 200 300 mil uh up to a billion you know if you're thinking like okay mentally i think it's going to get to a billion where something like nub one i think nub had a pre-sale because i've heard about like a pre-sale chat or a kol chat or something like that so you don't really you know like nub is not really like mew mew is kind of mysterious you're like not really sure who made it it's a little bit like Boehm. You're kind of just like, oh, this thing is crazy. It came out of nowhere. It's just ripping super hard. Like, it seems intriguing. Whereas, like, Nub is cool in the sense that, like, it has a really big social following. Um, and they're making, like, great memes and stuff. And it kind of fits the Solana archetype. But, like you said, there's not as much liquidity there. And the holders in it are not as strong because you don't know who they are. You don't know that the team owns the whole supply. So you're taking a little more risk that it's going to be much more volatile. Whereas like me, you, you kind of know what's going to happen. Like if you're not a pussy and you have like the liquidity, you can literally just sit in that coin and kind of know it's probably going to go up. And there's a lot of spots like that you're going to run into in crypto where you're just like, okay, let me just ape heavy into this. And personally, I'm terrible at that. Like aping size into coins that are going up based on like volume is not a strong suit of mine. And, like, I try not to do it unless I have a lot of confidence. So, like, for me, I kind of lack, I kind of doubt my ability when I'm in those kind of situations, and it affects my performance, right? But that's why, like, I think Mew had a better ROI and kind of how it ended up the way it did, to answer your question. Yeah, I think a big factor also, and you mentioned this, was Bohm. Like, Bohm was the, to my knowledge, the first play on Solana that was just kind of mysterious, out of nowhere, high liquidity, and we saw an insane run up in like a record time with on such high liquidity. And I think yeah. a lot of people, you know, missed out on that. So when they saw Mew come up, just the psychology of like, I missed Bohm, maybe this is the next Bohm kind of played in the fact of, uh, Oh yeah. No, it was like a sick beta play, right? People call things beta plays all the time. If it's something like you're describing where you have Bohm and you're like, I missed it. I want to get into the next one. Like it's a beta to Bohm. And it definitely was that. It also came out at like a really late time of night Eastern, right? So there wasn't a lot of people who were online like hunting. Cause time, it's usually pretty dead at nights, honestly, Eastern time zone. Like if you're scanning, it's relatively easy to not miss anything because there's just so much less deployments and just so many less rugs. I guess all the ruggers, you know, are in Europe um, or they're in like the U.S. and they're like in the middle of the day. But 
like it was a much easier in that sense. So people like were kind of caught off guard by this thing just like exploding, right? Which definitely fed into it. A hundred percent. And one last topic I want to talk about was, so I saw Nub was starting to utilize a TikTok like strategy. They had like a TikTok, I think with like a hundred K. I haven't noticed too many projects, you know, fully utilize TikTok into their coins this cycle. I mean, it's irrefutable that TikTok is, you know, plays a big part of like, you know, the civilization and humanity today. But I'm surprised to not see more tokens, you know, align more with TikTok. We haven't seen a token that has, like, gone viral on TikTok because of it's a token. Like, we saw Smurf Cat, you know, pop up on Ethereum, uh, but it was already a trend on TikTok. And I think that's a big, like, thesis this cycle is using TikTok to market your token. And I haven't seen too many tokens really, you know, use the full effect of that. Yeah, I mean, that's true. There's not a lot of coins that are really using TikTok at all. I mean, I've t I like the Peaches guys, for example, we're thinking about doing it. I think it's just that a lot of people don't have connections to the crypto guys there, right? Because we're all in this, like, crypto Twitter world. But there's all these guys who are just, like, showing stuff on TikTok that, like, no one really knows how to get in touch with, right? And, like, for me, you know, I'm like, I don't even have a TikTok. You know, I'm like a elder. I've just never, <laughs> just never messed with it. Matt has his hand up. I'll go to him. I wanted to run back on the uh, community takeover talk because I really did appreciate uh, what was said there. But I, I do have just a few counter examples of when they do work. Um, and I think you were alluding to it earlier because a lot of people, they followed me previously because of a few different plays that are kind of like token revivals. And I think I kind of missed what you were trying to allude to there. And um, these are when uh, community takeovers actually work. So I have a an example of... I wouldn't call it necessarily like a community takeover because those get insidered and stuff like that. And I think what, what happened with this token is it was a beta play, right? And you had two mainstream potential tokens, specifically these Pepe-verse tokens like Bobo and stuff like that. And you have these straggling characters. And so what I thought about one day, I was like, there's a missing character here right? And it, it happened so fast where I shared this third character, the crab character, and the chart started going up quickly. And I think it happened fast enough where it didn't get monopolized by the wrong players. I think it happened fast enough where if you look at the chart for like this crab character, it, 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 it's looking good now, right? So it made it, it, it revived and it might make it to the bull run. So it's like this one counter example it is kind of like when it does work. And I think it, it can work when it's a beta play of a deserving meme that could make it to the bull run. And in this case, it was kind of like the perfect storm. So it's like, I go, I post it, it revives. Sure, it did like an instant 100x and retrace big, but it, it didn't just like pump one and done and die forever, like most community takeovers. And I think the reason why it didn't die is because it deserved to live. So it's kind of about being selective in that sense. Yeah, no, that makes 100% sense. There's a lot of times where there's like a coin that pops off and you see it's going to p and and you kind of know that people, if you buy it, like they're going to think it's interesting too and they'll buy it too. But everyone who's buying it kind of knows that it's not going anywhere, right? It's just going to like die. But in some situations where you have something that's really deserving to exist, often if people give it recognition and the right people do, it does end up, you know, coming up with a good result. Okay. Cool. So I think I'm going to go quick to Siggy and then I'm going to finish this off with like a knowledge bit about some of the stuff I'm doing on Solana because I really refined my Solana process over the last like five days or so. For sure. Well, then why don't you go through your Solana and then uh, I just want to give people a 30 second heads up at the end uh, for what's to expect on Wednesday on our next base. So I'll let you take yeah, it. Yeah, cool. Okay, yeah, so I was kind of annoyed with myself with Solana because I've basically been doing copy trading almost exclusively, and it's been good. I copy traded Glug into uh, Cat with Fade or Cat Got Fade or some stupid name on Solana, and that did pretty well. Um, and, like, the copy trading has been pretty good, just kind of scanning wallets and finding good ones and setting it up on Prodigy and Flux and trying to get a feel for the better one. But I wanted to be able to kind of find things myself and position myself better. So one thing I've started doing is... On Solana, you know, I, I've gone over before how to find out, like, the owner of a coin and who made it, right? You go into the metadata and check the authority. 
that process can be a bit tedious if you're like checking every single deployment because they just deploy so many coins, right? Especially if you're like me and you're checking like three chains at the same time, which is what I was doing. So what I started doing is I started using a website called rugcheck.xyz, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, but may or may not use. And I found it to be very helpful. And what I basically do is I can see on there the creator. And when you click the creator, they've already done the work for you of going into the metadata and finding the owner. So what I do is I check the creator. I try and see the funding if it's leading to someone who rugged before or someone who's bought a lot of coins or bought a lot of rugs, right? And if it hasn't like hit those boxes, then I check the top holders, which is all the way to the right, laid out very clearly, and check to see the kind of coins they're got buying so I can understand, like, okay, if this guy bought a coin earlier that Pump and Dumped, and so did the second holder, then it's probably the same team. I don't want to play a Pump and Dump. I'm only looking for, like, gems on Solana. I'll pass on it. And then it also shows you if liquidity has been burned and if it had the mint renounced. So it's just a really helpful site that puts it all together in one place. It's completely free. All you have to do is, like, sign up with, like, your backpack or phantom wallet but you should be using a backpack wallet because phantom is terrible and then basically that's it right so i've been that's what i've been doing on Solana, and i found it to be very effective uh i'll update you know once i'm able to hit something that runs pretty hard the best thing i hit so far like during the hours i've been awake is that catholic coin which i did like okay on but it wasn't a great coin i've been pretty unlucky with the time things have gone but you know as you as you kind of improve your process on chain and you keep to a good process you often get results that's the mantra i've always lived by and then i'll let siggy kind of go ahead awesome no, i really appreciate it. i appreciate everyone coming uh really quick just for everyone so uh, as i said last week we're gonna be hosting the spaces monday wednesday friday at 3 p.m eastern so keep a lookout for uh the next space and the next topic as well if you guys have something you want us to talk about we'd love to also hear suggestions so feel free you can either dm myself uh, or Uniswap villain um, or Mario as well. If you guys want to uh, jump in, discuss a topic, or if you also want to come speak on stage, we'd love to hear uh, from your opinions. And lastly, please also do me a favor and make sure you guys follow all the speakers on stage for time you guys had today, discussions and everything else. And uh, looking forward to the next space, uh, we're going to be having a couple more projects on mo more likely than not on Wednesday and Friday. So, um, you know, keep it tuned for that, for what projects we're going to bring on and, and what's going to happen with those. Obviously, the last time we had Base Peaches on, it ended up doing uh, some incredible numbers. So make sure you guys uh, obviously do that. you a follow. And then, uh, yeah, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to run this back on Wednesday and uh, we're going to do it even bigger and we're going to have a few projects come on. So keep it tuned up for that. And um, until then, appreciate all the speakers again. Thank you again, Uniswap Villain. Thank you, Mario. And, uh, Thanks again to Mario for the platform for being able to do this. And uh, let's run it up on Wednesday. We'll speak soon. Thanks again, guys. All right. Catch you guys later. Bye-bye.